What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to undo and redo for our text widget with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at undo and redo. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so we are moving right along learning all about this text widget, which has just tons of different things you can do. In this video, like I mentioned, we're going to look at redo and undo. So you type something, you know, you don't like it, you delete it, you're like, oh wait, I want that back. We need a redo button that will bring back whatever you just deleted or changed or whatever. And the text widget actually makes this incredibly easy. I mean, it is super, super simple. It's built right into this thing. We don't have to do any special coding, really. This is honestly going to take us like 30 seconds, and then this video is going to be over. It's that simple. So uh, let's head back over to our code. And I'm using the same text underscore write dot pi file that we've been working on for the last few videos. If you haven't seen those, check the comment section below for the link to the playlist. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So we've got our code. Let's just head down to the bottom here and let's uh, just make a couple of buttons. So let's call this one redo underscore button. And it's going to be a button. And eventually we'll probably, when we build out a real text editor, we will probably not make these buttons. We'll probably put them up at top in a menu bar. Or maybe we'll make a little undo button with a little icon or something. I haven't really decided. But we'll see. You could do it either way. So, okay, our button wants to go in root, and we want the text to equal redo. And let's give this a command of, and I'm just going to leave this for now. So let's go ahead and copy this. And we want to put this on the screen, so let's go redo underscore button dot pack, and let's just give this a pad y of like 5 to push it down just a little bit. So, okay, we've got a redo button. Now let's create an undo button. And I'm going to call this undo button. And for the text, I'm going to change this to undo. And actually, let's put this one first, because I think we want to undo something before we redo it, right? So now let's go undo underscore button dot pack. And again, we'll give this a pad y of 5, just to push it down a little bit. So, okay, we've got our buttons. Now we need the actual commands. And usually when we create a command, then we have to come up here, uh, you know, somewhere and create a function in order to do whatever that command does. But in this case, we don't have to do that. Like I mentioned, the text widget has a built-in function that lets you undo and redo things. It keeps track of your typing and, or whatever for you. And it keeps track of, in a sort of a stack atmosphere. We don't have to really talk about that. Basically, what I'm saying is we can just access that functionality that's built into the text widget right here in our command. So to do that, we just call the name of our text widget, which is my underscore text. And then we give it a dot edit underscore undo. There we go. And for the redo button, it's the same thing, my underscore text dot edit underscore redo, right? And that's all there is to it. We do not need function brackets on this. You know, just edit underscore redo and edit underscore undo will do the trick. All right, so there's one more thing we have to do now. Our text box, when we first defined it, we have to designate that we will allow undo and redo, right? So. Let's just head over to our text, my underscore text text box where we first defined it. So this is our text widget. We put it in my frame and we've, we put all these attributes. We could just slap a comma on here and then we set it to undo equals true, right? So, okay, if we save this guy and let's run this. So let's pull this over and let's open a text file, our sample text file. And let's say we get rid of best wishes. Now we can do undo and it pops right back. We want to, again, yeah, we actually do want to take it off. Oh, we can redo that thing. Oh, we can bring it back. We can uh, type some stuff. Ah, I don't like that. Let's undo that. Boom, brings it all away. And like, oh, no, maybe we did want that after all. We can click redo. Boom, brings it right back. So that's all there is to it. Super easy and uh, really, really cool. It's one of the nice things about the text widget. You know, this is built right into it. So, okay, that was quick. And let's see. Oh, this was a very, very quick video. So let's, uh, what else can we do here? Let's look at this title here. Whenever we open a text file, let's change the title of our widget or the title of our program up here where it says codemy.com to the name of that, that file. So let's do that real quick. That'll just take a second, right? So let's head back over to our text and let's look up in our open text 
function. And we can see here's where they were calling the ask open file name. And then we're sending text file to that thing. And then we're doing some stuff to the text file. So before we do that, let's create a title and set that equal to text underscore file. Now we've got this title. Let's just come down here and let's go root dot title. And then let's pass in an F string and then let's reference that title or we could call it name maybe. So up here, let's call this name, whatever we want. And let's put a dash and let's call this a text pad. Let's call our app text pad. It's like notepad only for text. <laughs> right? We don't want to copyright infringe Microsoft by calling it notepad. So let's call it text pad. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and let's run this guy real quick. Make sure that worked. So notice our title, codemy.com, learn to code. Now if we open a text file, sample.txt, now it up here it says C GUI sample text.txt. Now if we wanted to get rid of the C GUI stuff, we can do that as well, maybe. So we could go name equals name dot replace. And let's replace C forward slash GUI forward slash with that. So let's save this, give it a run. Okay, let's open a text file. And now it just says sample dot text. If we want to get rid of the dot text, we could do that as well. Uh, we know how to do this from our MP3 player that we worked on, you know, a couple weeks ago, we could let's see where are we at here, right here, we could do it again, name equals name dot replace. And let's replace dot text with nothing. Save this, give it a run. Now we can open our text file and it should just say sample. There we go, whatever you like. I kind of would want to keep the dot text just so we can remember what it is. It's a text file, but either way, that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's how to undo and redo. That's how to change the title. We already pretty probably knew how to do that, but it's just something fun we can do. Uh, and uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 on membership. So pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.